and we arrived a little bit too early <laughs> we can't get on just yet and we have the luscious Lynn oh I don't know about that <laughs> come on flying the Devon flag yeah we picked up a new one the old one on the stern of the boat I don't know if you can see it is uh, starting to strip its threads off the back this is a bigger one so we're going to have a look at the Navicom it doesn't transmit seems to be a fault somewhere so first job try and release it from its mounting and screw each side piece Probably stuck. It's been there. Yeah, it's stuck it's in its slot. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Out she comes. But is it a bit tight? Well, it's not so much tight as the corrosion. You can see there's corrosion on the centre pin. A bit of corrosion on that. So we've got what they call a dummy load to test it, take the radio, plug the dummy load in, tighten the outer connector, batteries on, radio on, ah. so we have one of the channels, Go to 16. Now what we're looking for is whether or not it transmits, which it does and stays on transmit. There we go. So we know that the actual radio is okay. So the problem is in the coax uh, going from the back of the set, this one, to a connector on deck and that connector on deck and then has another plug in it from the antenna at the top of the mast. So it's a case of substitution just to see which is faulty. Turn this off. No tea today. We haven't fetched us flipping flask. No sandwiches, <laughs> no tea. Total disaster. <laughs> so I brought this temporary quarter wave whip antenna. It's a little bit big to go round the U-bolt on it. It's a little bit big to go round the uh, um, handrail at the back. So what we'll do, bit of a bodge, but this is only a test anyway. Good job in it as well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what if I do for time be? Yeah, of course it will. Test it. I've got the bosun's chair if I decide to go to the top of the mast. Oh, not today. I ain't carrying you if you fall. No, I've, got, I've got to get a dose of uh, courage first. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said curry then. <laughs> we had that last night. Last night. Oh dear. Right, so <laughs> of all things, a nail brush is acting as a spacer. Have you whipped that out my bathroom? Uh, um, uh, 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 yes. Well, next job is to connect the, the cable <laughs> up. So that will do for that for the time being. So from home I brought some ready-made extension cables. A, uh, what they call, SWR meter, standing wave ratio meter. That will tell you whether there's any fault on the cables. But at the moment, I know these have tested okay. I'll take this one apart. Bear in mind, this is just a temporary thing. Just to make sure the radio will actually transmit into 
an antenna. So we now run this through. We now run this through back into the cabin to the aerial. So what we've done, we've brought it through from there. Just a temporary arrangement. Plug it into the back of the set. Sixteen. Oh, see if there's any signals. Nothing at the moment. Let's double check with this handheld. Setting this one off scanning. No. I'll take it to 16. This will probably uh, deafen the poor radio, so... One, two. Ah, so there we go. There's obviously some sort of problem with radio. One, two. So... Volumes up. So I've set the handheld to channel 16, set the radio to channel 16. I will admit we've already done one test and basically what happens is it shows that it's receiving up there and so you can tell it's transmitting okay through antenna and actually with the local coast watch station we did a transmission test and they reported back the can readability five so no problem with that on that little whip what we think is wrong is that the internal speaker is not working because we're getting no audio from the system turned up squelch completely off volume up no audio well fortunately there's a little 3.5 millimeter jack on the back for external speaker so i'll get an external speaker try it on that if it works okay that's fine just leave it as it is uh, but in the meantime, this temporary system's coming off. I'm going to investigate the other. So further to the uh, testing of the radio. There's a connection boot just here. Ooh, that feels remarkably loose. I don't mean the boot, the uh, connector underneath. See what we can find in this. I'm not going to cut it, it's just to give me something to push up on. This come in a little bit. Yeah, a bit, bit, bit. Mm. But, uh, there's a helping hand, shall we say. Have we got any WD-40? <laughs> I think so, but it'll end up a slippy mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Very loose. That was like that before I even undid the uh, connector. Oh, that's interesting. One of the problems we come across now, the connector on deck is actually an end type. The very thing I haven't brought with me. I do have them at home, but haven't brought them. So I can't carry out the test that I wanted to. So having said that, looking inside the end type, it's in good clean condition. Shows that as well. So we've picked up a couple of items. I uh, picked up a uh, extension speaker, waterproof extension speaker. Nice little speaker. Uh, 
unfasten this and there's a extension socket Wow, that was bloody tough, mate. I would break him in it then, twisting around to film that. <laughs> so, battery on, instruments on. Nothing. Nothing from the uh, speaker, which there was the other day, so we'll check. Uh, let's have a look, see, menu. Go down the menu. Ah! It is coming out of the speaker. Right, so it's not beeping on that one. It is beeping on that one. So, anyway. so we've now proved out that the uh, speaker in there is no longer working. But this little speaker will work and should fit nicely in there when I get round to it. But at least we've tested the radio out now. We've uh, got to the root of the problem, shall we say. I didn't video it, but from the antenna at the top of the mast, it comes down to what is classed as an N-type plug, which goes on a socket on the um, coach house roof. And as you can see, that's the end of it. And that's the state of the center pin. Uh, I can't show you, but I will tell you that the coax has stripped some of the outer and it's jet black with corrosion. So the coax and the antenna will require a trip in the bosun's chair to the top of the mast. Do you want me to wall you up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could love. I don't think I particularly fancy it, but if we want a radio, that's what we've got to do. So the other thing uh, we bought apart from the speaker is a Wi-Fi router. Now we've had this out at home and set it all up. So that's the router charging cable. I'll leave that out. So that's the actual Huawei, Huawei router, button on top, press and hold, and we're going to turn on. <laughs> yep. So you can't really see it, but it's a bit sunny, isn't it? It's a bit sunny, but you can see the two green lights, mm. battery, signal. I suspect that should turn red and then back to green as it acquires signal. But uh, the idea it. is that we could uh, possibly pin that up there somewhere, somewhere at a higher level. And Put it on top of mask. <laughs> <laughs> on top of the mask, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Anyway, we're out of uh, home Wi-Fi signal range. So in theory, if I take my phone out, press on the Wi-Fi, network, Thetis, connected, so we now have a Wi-Fi network all around the boat, and I suspect if I try really hard, go to that one, Go to that one. And there's a picture of my camera where the shed is. So That's in his back garden, not mine. <laughs> Mine's a bit more prettier than that. So we've now got a Wi-Fi signal on board, which we can connect to any time we want. It uh, contains a SIM card, um, six pound a month probably equivalent to seven dollars or whatever and uh, we've also got a camera 
um, that's in the vehicle at the moment but the idea being you've just seen me look at the shed camera I can do another camera up on the mast and watch the whole hair area around the boat uh, via this router this router will take an input there there we go and that can plug in there's a USB socket down here I can plug it in there or I can put another USB socket up here this is the dual um, charger for the solar system and goes out to each battery there's twin batteries on this boat and it's charging the batteries so I could put something up there to connect into but as it stands now this will run for eight hours on its inbuilt battery so I don't, right. I don't think that's bad for you some boat well thank god for that let's flip and have a cup of tea now oh a cup of tea again <laughs> that sounds great right